Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here in YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This is a telescope video. This is part one of two. And in this part, I am going to demystify the telescope. I am going to show you how they work, what they are, and what all those little pieces are that come with them, and how to use it. You know, everything, I'm going to take all the worry out of a telescope. Um, I get a lot of comments and email from people that say, uh, oh, I don't understand what this thing is, what are these little parts, what's all this stuff, how do we use this telescope, it, it acts weird, it, I can't move it right, I, don't, I can't see things. I'm going to demystify all that and take all the worry out of it. You're going to come away from this knowing how to use a tel small telescope. And in part two, I'm going to um, actually use it. Well, I don't know if I'm going to actually use it. We'll have to see how lighting is at night. But I'll show you how to use it for, to observe things. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, so maybe you get a small telescope as a Christmas present, a birthday present, or you bought yourself one. and you, Or you've had one for a while and it's in the closet because you get a little confused and it disappointed you. You know, because there's a lot of stuff, all these little things and stuff. Dang, how does, how does all of that work? That's what this video is all about. Giving you um, the information you need to get the most out of your small telescope. It's really quite wonderful, you know. This is, you know, probably a hundred times more powerful than the one Galileo had. So let's, let's launch into it. All right, so first let's take a look at something called the mount of the telescope. And the mount is the, just this whole apparatus that the telescope sits on and it's, it's kind of important that you understand how that works. Some of it is very easy and some of it's a little bit tricky. Um, there are several different types of mounts. You might have a small telescope with a mount like this. And I don't have a telescope mounted on this but let's take a look. Right, it goes up and down, goes side to side. Very intuitive, very easy to use, something that a camera tripod has. There are telescopes like this. I don't really don't have to explain that to you. You just point the telescope very easily. You might have a small telescope with something called a Dobsonian mount, where the telescope kind of sits in like this cradle, but it's still the same kind of a thing. It goes up, it goes down, and you turn it. Easy to understand, right? Ah, but now here's where the confusion comes in, although it's really not that confusing. You might have a telescope with something called an equatorial mount. Does that look familiar? Right, kind of complicated little thing. It's not that complicated. We're going to take a look at this whole thing and I'll explain to you how it works. So this is an, an equatorial mount. And it doesn't, it isn't immediately intuitive. It doesn't go up and down, left and right. It rotates on two axes, like this, look. See, it rotates like this. And it rotates like this. So you should try that, get familiar with your telescope, try the rotations. And with those two rotations, you can of course reach just about anything in the sky anywhere, although in some spots it will be awkward. But let me explain a couple of things that kind of trip people up when it comes to using this type of amount. It's really quite wonderful um, because what you can do is you can set this declination, polar axis, to point at the North Star and then with one rotation, with just simply one knob, this knob actually, you can move the telescope and follow anything in the sky once you find it. That's the kind of nice thing about it. You don't have to go left, right, up, and down. It'll rotate and stay on an object. Photographers that take long exposure photographs, you find that, you know, extremely useful. But um, let me see, what's the couple of things? Now let's look at the polar axis. This is um, a little bit more than a beginner's thing, and you don't even have to worry about this. But you can set this to your latitude with a knob, with a turn knob here, to find the pole. All right, whatever your latitude is, you would set that, and then find the north pole, and then lock it. And if you're not worried about that, make sure this knob is locked. If there is a locking knob for it, lock it so it doesn't slip or fall on you. Um, so now let's take a look at these. Now there's a couple of important things. You're wondering what these knobs are? These are fine adjustment knobs and they're really quite wonderful uh, because 
When you're looking through the telescope, you can slowly move the telescope to follow any object that you're looking at. Because within 30 seconds, depending on the magnification, the object will have drifted out of you and you don't see it anymore. But with this knob here, you can move the telescope finely and continue watching, looking at the object. And so you can almost not even see it's moving, but it is moving. But when you're looking through the eyepiece, you'll notice it distinctly. It's very nice. Use these knobs for fine adjustment. Now one thing that trips people up is that um, these axes have locks on them usually. Right? right here is one lock. So if that's unlocked, the telescope moves freely by hand. See? But if you lock it, it won't move freely by hand anymore. It's locked. But typically the adjustment knobs, the fine tuning knobs still work even though it's locked, which is nice. See, can you see that motion? And I'll lock this one. Let's take a look at this one here. I'm going to rotate the telescope so you can see the other knob. And this one's kind of a different special case. Now some telescopes have this too. If you lock this other, right? You can still use your fine adjustment knob. But, and this trips people up sometimes, is some telescopes, that knob will actually bottom out. It'll hit the end of its play. Watch. See, we'll get to the end here, if you can see that. And then it'll stop. It won't turn anymore. So people say, gee, my it doesn't work. Just take a look at this little box set up here and see if you're on one end or the other. And get it to the middle. And now it'll, let's get a closer look. See this? Watch. I'm going to turn the knob and see how this is shifting. Shifting all the way to the end. And then it'll come to a point where it'll stop. And you can't turn it anymore. So if you can't turn your knob in one direction, take a look at that. It may just be at the end, so put it set, set it in the center before using your telescope. And now you can go both directions. So typically, what you do is, you, when you're viewing, you loosen these two knobs. Move that other one. Move the telescope to where you want to, to you find your object. Lock them down. And then to keep the object in view, you just can use your fine adjustment knobs or to get the object centered. Really quite nice. Now, if you're not worried about the polar axis lining this thing up with the North Pole, it's a little too complicated for it, a little bit too much, that's okay, don't worry about it. There are portions of the sky where you'd be like, oh, I can't quite get the telescope to point there just right because it's a little awkward. You can. What you can do then is, some telescopes have it, can you see this? Underneath, have this nice tightening, which you can rotate the whole thing. See it? So rotate the whole thing, lock it down, and now try finding the object in the sky. And if you don't have this ability to rotate, that's okay, just turn the tripod. So let's take a look at balancing of the telescope. And this is important too, because when you're looking through it and you're magnifying say a hundred times, any small motion of the telescope will lose your object, It'll, it'll move. So you don't want the telescope to move on its own, you want it to be balanced. And that's kind of a simple thing to, but watch this. If we put the telescope horizontal like this, right? It should stay with the knobs loose. If it drifts one way or the other on its own, you know, which you don't want, you can loosen the cradle, which is what holds the telescope, the tube, and shift the telescope one way or the other. Watch. See? There we go. And reset it. 
And this is particularly useful if you mount a camera on your telescope. If you put a camera on there, it's going to be heavier on this end and it'll sag. So then you would shift it. So let's take a look at the counterweight. Now the counterweight offsets the complete weight of the telescope. Let's take a look at that. Let's set it in a position like this where it's horizontal. See? So now if the telescope are out of balance, which let's see if I can do this, get it. See? You see it wants to fall because the telescope is heavy. The tube is heavy. So it wants to fall. The counterweight is shifted too far, too close to the center. If the counterweight were too far out, it may want to go the other way. It may want to go this way, which, well, we're not, we're not here. It may want to shift this way. So you find a spot where the counterweight balances the telescope. And you're ready for good viewing. There we go. So that's it, you know. Um, take a look at your telescope. Look at the various parts and the knobs and the locks. Right? Make sure if you're trying to move it, the telescope, the locks are unlocked. Then you can freely move it. And once you find an object, you can lock those down if you want which is preferred, and then you can use the fine-tuning knobs, which generally still work for most telescopes, to still fine-tune your view and slowly move the telescope. And make sure it yeah. looks good. One more thing. Um, is tri tripods are very similar to camera tripods, usually. They'll have an adjustment, so you can raise or lower the height of the telescope, which is very nice. And when using it, you know, set it on um, stable. Or I'll, I'll talk about that more. So next, let's um, look at what is called the optical tube assembly. And we'll look at two different types of telescopes. One with a mirror and one with a lens. That's this whole assembly here. How it works and how to use it. Some basics. All right, so let's take a look at the optical tube assembly on a telescope. That's this part, the part that does the actual viewing, the seeing, the light gathering. And for a small telescope, there's typically two different types. One type is a reflector. It has a mirror in it. Let's take a look here. Can you see that mirror inside there? And the other type is a refractor, which is we more commonly think of as a telescope. And it has a lens in it, on the, in the front of it. Large lens that gathers light. So those are the two main types. Um, there's pluses and minuses to each of them, and you know, some people prefer one type over the other type. But let me let me look at a couple of things now, as just as a basic. When you're using the telescope, you're going to take an eyepiece, and you're going to put it in the eyepiece holder. And there's usually some knobs to tighten it up, and then you would look in that and focus with a focusing knob. There's a little knob there, see, and that would bring it into focus. You can't do this in the house, you have to take it outside. The telescope needs a certain amount of distance before it will actually focus on something. So if you're doing it in the house and you're saying, oh, I can't focus, it, everything's fuzzy, you gotta take it outside and look at something far away. And you notice that with the reflector telescope, the eyepiece is on the side. And with the refractor telescope, the eyepiece is on the end here. The same thing applies. You put the telescope in, you put the eyepiece in, tighten up the little knobs, and then you focus. Until everything is nice and sharp. Can you see that? Let me see if I can. Yeah, okay, you can see that. So very, very simple. Um, and here's a, a little tip that some people, you know, as a beginner, you might not realize, but if you don't see anything at all, it might be because of the lens cap. So check your telescope that the lens cap is off before you use it. 
And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in part two of this video. It's, it's kind of important. So really not much to it. Um, this type of telescope with the lens on it, a refractor, needs very little maintenance as far as the optical tube assembly goes. But when you have a telescope with a mirror in it, there are actually two mirrors in it. There's a large mirror here, and there's a smaller mirror up here to bounce the light out of the eyelet piece. It may need something called collimating. And that's a, a big word. It's a, it sounds a little intimidating. But you need to um, line up the mirrors so everything is perfectly lined up so the light comes in and then it's focused into the eyepiece. So if your telescope is very dim or you're having trouble, it's not, the images aren't crisp or they don't see, it doesn't seem right in terms of the amount of light it's gathering and like if you take it outside during the day and you look at things and it's very dim, it's not, it's fuzzy, it may need collimating. That's the process of lining those mirrors up. It's not that difficult, but it's a thing. You have to look that look up collimation. And I'll do a video on collimating. But let's move on. That's, a, that's, a, that's more advanced. I wanted to talk about this little telescope here. Most small telescopes have a secondary telescope called a finder scope. And uh, people rarely use them, but they're actually very useful. Um, and this one, I don't currently have one mounted on this one, but this one has, comes with one too. But that small telescope also could have lens caps on it, front and back sometimes. You take, make sure you take those off. And you use that to find objects in the, in the sky first. And let me try to describe that. That's what I have this here for. Finder scope is a very useful thing. Now let's say you're, that's what I got this chart for here. Yeah, can you see the stars on that? Now let's pretend this is the night sky. And there's all a lot of stars, right? Well, when you are using a telescope, you're looking through the eyepiece and you're magnifying things. This is what you're looking at, is something like this, a very small portion of the sky. So you have to poke around and you're like, oh, what's this? What do I, how do I find it? That's looking through the telescope. So is that the right object? Is that the star I wanted to see? Is that the nebula? Or where is it? So it can be tricky to, you know, look around. But when, if you look through the finder scope, there's much less magnification and um, you see a broader area of the sky like this. So what you can do is you can orient yourself and say, oh, that's the star right there that I want to find. In, re in relation to other things, and then you find it, and then you center your finder scope, so it's right on that object, whether it be a star or a nebula, and then when you look through the telescope, you see, when you, now, you look through the telescope, and you're right on it, or well, very close to it. So a finder scope is a very useful thing, I recommend using it, and I, let me show you how to set it up. During the day, Take your telescope outside, right? Take your telescope outside and look through it. Point it at something. Point it at a, a, a house, a car across this car, down the street, um, a street lamp, um, you know, anything, a stop sign, anything, and point your telescope at it and lock everything in. Now your telescope is on that object. Now look through your finder scope. Is it centered right on that object too? Probably not. Use the little adjusting knobs to center the finder scope on that object. So now what happens is your telescope is looking exactly at one thing, your finder scope is looking at the exact same thing. So now then at night you use it in reverse. You use your finder scope to find something and whatever it's pointing at, you know your telescope is pointing at that too. Really quite simple. But very useful thing. Try to get used to using your finder scope. So that's it. That's the optical tube assembly. Really not a whole lot to it. It's a beautiful part of the telescope. It is the telescope. Everything else is just kind of like supporting material. So now let's go on to um, all those little pieces and parts that come with the telescope, what they do and how they work. All right, so I've set up the telescope here. Right here. Right, we're at the eyepiece. We're at the eyepiece holder. 
and with all the various stuff that you might get with your telescope. And I have a few extra accessories, but I'm, we're going to take a close look at all these things, what they do and how to use them. And it's not that complicated. Uh, if you, you may need to watch this section of the video a couple of times to get yourself used to all this stuff, but it's all very important and all very useful. So, and, and, and a lot of this stuff, when you buy a small telescope, you often will get a lot of this stuff, and it's kind of confusing to see what's what and what it, what it works and how it how it all. What do you do with it, right? I'm going to show you that right here. It's going to be really quite um, fascinating. This is for me. Um, you know, I love miniature stuff, and I, I, you know, so this this part of it is kind of fun for me. I, I enjoy collecting this stuff and using it, and you will too. You'll get to know the things and what you want and how you view and observe and how you use your telescope and. And you can get a lot out of astronomy, you know, if you know how to use these things and what, what's useful. So let's take a look first. This is the eyepiece holder on the telescope, right here, right? And you would focus your telescope, bring it into crisp focus with this, with the focuser knob, right? And it should come with a cap. There's a little plastic cap on there. Just like there's a plastic cap on the eyepiece holder, right? Um, excuse me, on the finder scope, right? It's got a plastic cap here, and I've got one here too. Always use those plastic caps. Keep them on the telescope when it's not in use. It protects the sensitive optics. You don't want dust or dirt or anything to get inside that telescope. So always, um, you know, always use those. Save those. Any caps you get, save them. So let's take a look at the thing called the eyepiece. Some people call these lenses, but they're not lenses. They have lenses in them, but this is called an eyepiece. And this slides into the holder, and then you tighten a knob or two to hold it in place. And now you can look through it and focus until your image comes in nice and crisp. And like I said earlier, you can't do this in the house. You need a certain amount of space, whether it be you know 50 yards or 30 yards, to actually focus on something, it's got to be far away. And the nice thing about something like this is, you find something and you want to get a closer look, you can take that eyepiece out and put a more powerful eyepiece in. And there, that's a big thing. People ask all the time about power and magnification. When it comes to small telescopes, power and magnification is not a thing. You shouldn't concern yourself with it very much because small telescopes aren't that powerful. But I'm going to show you something. Eyepieces come with these numbers on them. Can you see that says four millimeters? Right? And this one says 10 millimeters. Right? And you're saying, well, what, what does all of that mean? Well, you know what? You don't have to worry about that too much because. With a different telescope, it'll magnify differently. But this is what you can do, and this is important. When you're starting out looking at something, whether it be the moon, whether it be Jupiter, whether it be a star cluster or a galaxy or anything, use the eyepiece with the largest lens in it. See the lens there? See that circle? That's the, you know, the lens. And see how this one has a much smaller lens? This one's better in terms of it's a lower magnification, but it'll give you crisper images and a larger field of view so you can find things. So when you're starting looking at something, always start with the biggest lens, the, the eyepiece with the biggest lens you have. That's your workhorse. It's probably going to be a 20, maybe a 28 millimeter, 20 or 28. Use that one. It'll be the easiest one to use. It gives you the lowest magnification, which is great for a small telescope. That's wonderful. And then when you find something and you're looking at it, your eyes have adjusted to the night, you might want to switch to another one. Like we'll switch to a little bit of a higher power from that 20 to say a 12.5. And we take a look. Slide that in there and lock it in. And take a look. Still looking good. We can switch to an even higher power there. We'll try our, what is this, a four? Yep, a four. Could switch to a four. So a rule of thumb there. Go with the 
Eyepiece with the largest lens. That's probably your best one and your best bet with a small telescope. Really, really very simple. And if you wear glasses, you can keep them on for most eyepieces. Some eyepieces, you may have to take your glasses off so you can get really close to it. That's okay. Experiment a little bit with that. So that's, you know, eyepieces. And um, when it comes to cleaning all this stuff, eyepieces and whatnot, get yourself a little lens cleaning kit. And always, there are sensitive um, scientific optics. If they come with cases, keep them in their cases and keep them covered. There's just a light cover for that one. And keep them covered up. There's the cap for that one. You know, just keep them covered up. And I made a little drawer for mine that goes with one of my telescopes. So I can keep them all very organized. You know, I like it. So those are eyepieces. That's uh, pretty understandable, right? So, now let's take a look at um, something called a Barlow. Now they are typically a Barlow that'll be, say, a 3x or a 2x. That's the magnification. What this does is it doubles all your lenses, all your, excuse me, eyepieces. It takes any eyepiece you have and you put it inside the Barlow right and then you put the Barlow in your telescope like this so now that Barlow whatever the magnification was on your eyepiece this particular Barlow triples it and you can do the same thing now you can take that out put another eyepiece in and view now when it comes to Bardo lenses and small telescopes, yeah, they're kind of shaky. You know, it's a bit of a tricky thing to get high magnifications like that, but give it a try. Um, definitely a 2 2x Barlow is preferable over a 3x Barlow. Because they may tell you, hey, you can, with a, with a 3x Barlow, you can get up to 500 magnification. Well, forget it. 500 magnification is too much for a small telescope. Um, you're not going to get crisp images. But that's how a Barlow works. Now, and see, all your, now all of a sudden, it's kind of like, instead of having, you know, four eyepieces that you can put in your telescope, you kind of have eight, because you have the four you can put there in the telescope, or you can put the Barlow in, and then use those four at triple power in there, or at double power. So, but I'm not a big fan of Barlow lenses when it comes to small telescopes. Um, they can be mm, a bit uh, tricky because the magnification gets to exceed the limits that the telescope can see. Let's take a look at another thing here. Now, I am a fan of this. When it comes to eyepieces, they make these things called eyepiece filters. And filters are wonderful when viewing things in the night sky. Because what they do is, and my favorite here is a moon filter. Somebody gave me this. What they do here is they filter out certain band wavelengths of light. Let me take that out. Which means you can oftentimes get a better look at celestial objects. When that light is filtered out, other light will come into, will be able to see other colors. And a filter screws into the bottom of your eyepiece, like this. Can you see that? There's the filters. That's a pretty standard thing. Screws in. And now a particular spectrum or, or, or wavelength will be filtered out, and you won't see it, but you'll be able to see other wavelengths. And then you just put it in your eyepiece holder, just like any other eyepiece. There we go, and tighten it up. And they make, you know, colored filters to filter out certain wavelengths. Wonderful, you know, filters are nice, I like them. They, they make a difference, you'll see the difference with a lot of objects, you know, you're looking at nebula and stuff like that. So let's take a look at this thing right here, called a diagonal, sometimes called a star diagonal. When you're, when you're looking through your telescope, say you're looking at something high in the sky, right overhead, the eyepiece is going to be pointing at the ground. You're going to have to lay on the ground to look through it, right? It's very uncomfortable. 
But if you use a diagonal, you can put that in the eyepiece holder, tighten it up, and then put your eyepiece in that. Now it's a much more comfortable angle you can, you can look at. You can, it's much more comfortable for you. So the light is bent this way and comes out there. And now you can look without having to lay on the ground. And you can ro and rotate that as you need it for more comfortable viewing. It just, it just bends the light at a 90 degree angle for you to look at. Now let's take a look at something. Many, many telescopes, particularly many small telescopes, if you look through it, you may say, hey, everything's upside down. I looked at the stop sign across the street, or my neighbor's house down the road, and it's upside down. Is there something wrong with my telescope? No, there isn't. Your telescope is fine. Um, that's how telescopes work. And they can be corrected to be right side up. But for a celestial telescope, astronomy, it doesn't really matter whether Jupiter's upside down or the moon's upside down. You can't really, there's no real reference for it. And to erect the image to get it right side up takes um, energy and light and you want to you don't want to take any energy or light away from your imaging right but if you do because it, it reduces the it reduces the um, capabilities of your telescope by a little bit but they make something called an erecting prism and you, if you want to use your telescope for daytime observing of things, you may want to get yourself an erecting prism if you don't have one already. This, re, this um, flips the image so it's right side up. And it works the same way as the Barlow or the right angle. Right? Take the caps off. Put it in your eyepiece holder. Tighten it up. And then you can put your eyepiece right in that and tighten it up. Now images are right side up. So let me see if I get everything. That's pretty much everything. It's not that complicated. Um, if you're a little confused, just watch this section of the video again. Let me give you some quick tips here. If you don't have a case or a little toolbox or a little some kind of um, hard shelled case to keep all your stuff in, I recommend you get one or you make one. So to keep things organized and keep things safe, always keep everything covered with either the caps or in their little um, cups. There are sensitive uh, optics that need to be cared for. Get yourself a lens cleaning kit so you can clean things. You don't want to just wash them in the sink or something. You know that's not good for them. Uh, and that's it. You know we love. Barlow lenses are eh, kind of tough with a small telescope. Difficult to get reliable performance out of them. Um, we love filters. Filters are wonderful because they filter out certain bandwidths of, lo of light, allowing other bandwidths to be better seen. A diagonal, an erecting prism, Barlow, eyepieces. And that's it. Always use, always keep everything capped and covered when not being used. So that's it. That's um. This is probably my favorite part about the telescopes is all the little bric-a-brac, the accoutrement that comes with it. Um, if you have a question, if you've got a new telescope, you can send me, uh, you know, a message. Um, send me an email. Uh, leave a comment. If you have questions, I'd be happy to ask. Let's take a look. Let's finish this whole thing off by um, taking a look at. Oh, let me see. Oh, my. Um, taking pictures with a small telescope. Thanks. All right, so you might not think this is uh, basic stuff, but actually you can take some pictures with your small telescope. Uh, I'll show you a couple of little techniques here. If, with a cell phone or a regular point-and-shoot camera, you can actually get right up to the, get it in focus, get right up to the eyepiece and take some pictures. It, does, it can work for brighter objects like the moon or Jupiter. So give that a try, cell phone or, or a point and shoot telescope. Right? Can't take long exposures, but worth a shot. I've gotten some pretty decent uh, pictures. Um, and let's take a look at another thing. So that's with a, you know, a regular handheld camera or a cell phone even. 
Um, let's take a look at another thing. Some telescopes, small telescopes, come with this nice little setup here. This is a piggyback mount. All right, you're wondering what that is, right? It's this little knurled knob and a threaded shaft. And, tele and cameras commonly come with this standard um, threaded hole on them. I think that's quarter 20, maybe quarter 28. And you can actually mount that on that threaded shaft. Like this. And then run the knurled knob so it tightens the camera. And then you use the camera, you use the telescope to point and find your object. And then you just use the camera as you normally would use your camera. You can look through it to see what you got. Snap your pictures. That's piggybacking. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. A lot of new small telescopes come with that. And um, you can use that same technique if you have a more professional camera. Like, let me do it. But there are more techniques for taking pictures with cameras. But, you know, just as a beginner thing, one of the... So... So you got this camera. Let me put a let me put a a bigger lens on that. So there you go. Now you use your telescope to find your objects and then you can snap your pictures as you normally would. It's a really easy, so basic kind of a thing that you can use the small telescope for. But remember, and we talked about this earlier in the video, you've, you've changed the weight of your telescope. Um, you probably need to adjust your counterweight. And you may need to slide the tube to keep it balanced. And, you know, so, because now it's much heavier, the telescope is much heavier, see, and it might shift, so you have to make sure everything's tight. So that's it. Let's take um, one last look. This is a very long video. One last look at um, my telescope book, and we'll, we'll end with that. Okay, so this has been a very long video. It might be the longest video I've ever done. And thanks for sticking with me so long. You're clearly interested in telescope and astronomy. Maybe you have a small telescope and you want to get more out of it. You want to dig it out of the closet and use, try it again. Um, I also have written a book on how to use a small telescope. The title is See It With a Small Telescope. And inside there, I've selected 101 of the best things you can see in the night sky. Um, and it's a wonderful book. I'm very proud of it. It has very a lot of... Beautiful things like um, very generous and large oversized star charts to help you find things. And a lot of um, decisions have been made to try to make this as easy a, a book for you using a small telescope as possible. Like the format lies flat when you open it. So it's much easier for you to use when you're using your telescope, right? And the font is slightly larger than normal. Because at night you're going to try to be reading this maybe with a flashlight or a red flashlight and the, the, with a larger fire it makes it a little bit easier for you to use. So there's a lot of conscious decisions in something like this. And, uh, and I also was very concerned about how you know our perceptions of the night sky are like we all know what Jupiter looks like, right? You get this big beautiful, big beautiful thing but when, with a small telescope you're not going to see that. You're going to see something more like this. So I try to represent that often in the book. You know, what are you actually going to see? Right, the star cluster like that. You're not going to see these big dramatic things, but you, it is, you're going to see some quite beautiful things. So wonderful book with a lot of information. And I've formatted it, I've laid it out 
So it you, you, you take a tour of the night sky, sort of. We start out close to Earth with the moon, and then we move out towards the planets, right, Mars and Venus, and then we move further out and explore our Milky Way galaxy, right? And then we move even further out to other galaxies. Until finally, towards the end of the book, we get to the furthest thing you can see with your um, small telescope. And there's a lot of interesting things in here that you might not know about. We all know about all the usual things. But how about something called Kemble's Cascade, which is a straight line of 20 stars? That's an unusual thing. Or something called the Dumbbell Nebula or the Ring Nebula. Right? Or did you know that there's a beautiful double star where two stars are very close together and one is blue and one is a golden yellow? It's quite astonishing to look at. So uh, it's all in the book. Um, you can order it from my publisher's website at Ulysses Press. It's also available just about everywhere else online, like Amazon.com or um, Barnes & Noble. Uh, I'll have the links to the description in this video. It's very, very proud of this book. It's beautiful. Um, love to hear about your experiences with the small telescope. Send me a, an email. Uh, leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up for this video if you, if I helped you to understand your small telescope just a little bit better. Enjoy. Enjoy the night sky. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.